Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar on Endpoint Insights. This is part five of our five-part series on all things Endpoint Insights. Um, if you've missed the previous four, you can head over to our, our website and you can view them there. We'll also include them in the follow-up um, email as well. So today's webinar is hidden gems, you know, some of the less talked about features and functions within Endpoint Insights um, that Garth has been kind of holding back. So we're excited to share those with Marty as well. Um, per the usual, uh, let's keep your questions in the Q&A section of Zoom. It just makes it a lot easier for uh, everyone on our side to make sure we're answering the questions. Um, and also the chat, keep it for the chit chat. So if you could say where you're tuning in from, that's really exciting to see kind of the broad scope of the audience. Um, and one last thing is uh, we've got a new recast swag store that is newly launched. So there'll be four winners from this webinar. Each will be getting a uh, $100 gift card to the swag shop. All of us are currently wearing recast branded swag. We've got hoodies, blankets, t-shirts, um, keyboard vacuums, you name it, we probably have it. So shoes. 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 There are shoes in there, yes. I don't know if there's any other companies out there that have shoes that are branded with their logos. The one thing we're missing is the onesies, though. That's true. But we do have shoes. Um, so we got two great presenters at this point. I think both should be probably your household names, very familiar. We've got Garth Jones. He's our senior architect for Endpoint Insights, but he's also the uh, basically the founder and creator of Enhanced Soft, which is now Endpoint Insights. Um, his favorite movie quote of the day is, you're not dying, you just can't think of anything good to do. It's by Ferris. So if you know the movie, feel free to throw it into the chat. Um, then we have Marty Miller on the other side. He's our senior solution manager. Um, here before at Recast, he was a, uh, a desktop engineer for a few organizations. And Marty, his quote of the day is, time is an illusion, lunchtime doubly so. That is by Ford Perfect. So if you know that movie or that movie reference, throw it in there as well. Uh, technically, that's not from a movie. That's true. You're right. It's more of a series. I take that back. But yes, yeah, a series. But what type of series? Well, you're not just going to make it too easy at this point. Anyways, let's move to our agenda. Um, <laughs> So we've got a, a quick overview of kind of the main pillars of Endpoint Insights. Um, we're going to go over some of these, the gems I've been referencing in a demo. Um, and then also Q&A. If you have a question, toss it in the Q&A section. If you've been part of our webinars in the past, you can see it's very, very conversational. Um, so yeah, don't feel like you have to hold those to the back. And then, oh yeah, people are coming in. Yep, you guys got it. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Nice. Second Back to the Future. Oh, somebody from Quebec just uh, right next door to me. Oh, yeah. Wait, right. Garth. Yeah, Garth, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> All right, Garth and Marty, you guys want to do the, the input insights overview? <laughs> I would oh, love to do this. You just sit here and look at each other. That's fine too. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I thought we were playing chicken. No worries. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the endpoint insights overview. Um, so there are three things that we think of um, that bring more, uh, what endpoint insights is going to do. Um, first of all is uh, better environment knowledge. So we're actually bringing um, some additional data into your uh, config manager database, which means you can use it in config manager. You can use it other places where you use config manager information. Uh, better insight so that you can stay better informed about your hardware, software inventory, um, things that uh, we've got some additional data points that we add that uh, config manager isn't generally tracking. Um, so we can uh, actually get you some better insights into things about hardware and software uh, as well. And the, once you have all of this additional information, I always think of Endpoint Insights as information, um, you will be able to make better decisions once you have more information about what software is installed in your environment, uh, once you have better information about what warranty might exist on your devices, um, you can make better decisions and make sure that you know people downtime is minimized and all that kind of good stuff. I couldn't have said it better myself. I was thinking the same exact thing. Nice job, Marty. It's like it's your Thanks first you time guys. saying this. <laughs> and immediate feedback. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So should we talk about some gems? Sure. Oh, but oh. first, 
Hey, Murdy. Hey, 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 Garth. Did you hear that Recast might have an owl working for us? An owl working for us? I did not hear that. Come on, Marty. You gotta, you gotta work with me on that one. You're supposed to say who, who. <laughs> I knew it was you. I knew it was you. <laughs> I wasn't gonna walk right into that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Right uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, so here's kind of the, the main gems that we're walking through your daily dashboard emails, um, some hidden prompts, some role-based uh, um, permissions and EI, Power BI ideas, and then finally, the uh, SSRS status. Which, that's the bonus. So Garth is going to really pull that one out at the end. Um, from here, I think Marty, I'm let you take the screen share. Of course you are. Let me stop share. Okay, now it's there. Good. You go because I was not able to take it while you were still doing it. Funny how that All works. right, we're gonna go over to this screen up here. And the first thing that you may have uh, remembered seeing on there, what was the first thing that was on there, Garth? The daily emails. Awesome. So I am going to. This is probably HR. Uh, a little scary, but I'm actually going to show what my my inbox looks like uh, as far as emails go. So what we wanted to talk about was this here email just like this. <laughs> so sorry, as I catch uh, it just grab a cut, a drink of my tea there. So one of the things that um, this is technically not an endpoint insights feature. This is an SSRS uh, configuration manager feature. And one of those features is the ability to send an email to your team with the results of a report. So what you can end up doing is finding a report or dashboard, ideally in endpoint insights, and have it emailed out. So Marty has two that comes to him every day. One shows uh, the monitor replacement cost, and you can see based on that how much it's going to uh, uh, cost overall. And then the second one is uh, software inventory dashboard. So he can see what the software is in his environment. Where I see this used a lot is when you're doing things like uh, software update status, you know, having that mailed out to you. Uh, you could do it daily, but generally it's weekly or monthly. On top of that, just because we have it here, it doesn't mean that you have to send it as an email. You can actually to send it out to a file share or to uh, 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 well, generally a file share. But the, the the point being is, it can be an Excel, it can be a PDF, it can be a Word. Um, so you have the ability from that. Um, in a lot of situations, you can actually click on each of the links and get more information about those uh, software titles. Uh, so there are direct links in here. And I'm not gonna ask Marty to click them on uh, this uh, particular example, but it's really designed for your, your managers, your uh, project managers, anybody like that to be able to, to use this. And it's one of these features that, that just very few people use throughout the whole. Awesome. Yeah, and and to be completely honest, the reason that uh, Garth's not asking me to click on these things is I'm not connected to our VPN right now to actually make these work. Uh, but this would then go deeper into the report so that you can actually get a little bit further. If I were connected, uh, that would absolutely work that way as well. Um, the other thing that we want to show, so there is some additional information. This is our, our um, the slide deck that we were, were working on here. Um, one of the things that Garth did in our slide deck as well is that he made uh, links within our slide deck to some um, to, to blog posts that have been created that that uh, that Garth made. Some of them will send you to Ask Garth. Some of them will send you to recastsoftware.com. All of them will give you great information on how to do these things if you've never set up these things before. Um, or if you forgot that you could set up these things, that is also uh, potential as well. <clears throat> so we're gonna show this real quick. Um, and then, yeah, so essentially, you know, this is what that, that email looked like. We saw it in the, in the real thing, but here is also what it looks like. We have a quick 
poll to put up right now, Jeff, which this would be the poll about the, um, if you're using the SSRS reporting email feature or not. So we're gonna send out a poll. Are you currently using subscriptions for config manager data and SSRS? You can, you can only pick a single choice, apparently. You can't pick yes and no nope. at the same time. That would be awkward. So we're just curious on, on who's doing that. Yeah, so right now it looks like 40% um, do and yeah, give or take, 60% um, do not. See, I'd be curious why not. I mean, just a sheer fact of knowing that things like your software update status or um, sending out a report once a month to like your security team, you know, it's a great way to, to make them not ask you questions. <laughs> you know, you can whole, say, hey, I already sent you the email. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. For sure. My well, whole goal on it. So we actually have two two questions. We got one in uh, the the Q and A, and we got one into uh, chat. So um, I'm going to start off with the uh, chat one only because it's going to get lost quicker. And the question is: I have to increase the window here. Uh, are you pulling uh, models and manufacturers of models uh, from within the product, or is it using inventory from? Uh, MEMCM. Um, so the answer to that is we are pulling information via Endpoint Insights. What Endpoint Insights does is it uh, has a small little WMI provider and it will determine the make model serial number and a number of other attributes like how the monitors are attached uh, uh, and then return that to configuration manager as hardware inventory. And therefore you can pull it into things like ServiceNow and uh, things like that. Yeah, and I think one of the cool things that you even said there, Garth, was um, how the monitor is connected, um, yeah. which can be a super, super cool thing to know, especially if you're sending out technicians to, to locations or even to even if they have to go upstairs to change a uh, um, a cable, or if you're mailing a cable out to someone, if you already know what what connects to their computer, uh, you can send that one that will still work when they do it the next time. Cool. <laughs> so I love one of the uh, questions uh, uh, in the chat um, from uh, Courtney. Uh, are you really an IS department if you don't really ask a bunch of questions? Maybe. I don't know. Could be. <laughs> um, and then the second question in the Q&A is, um, can reports be style? Is there a stylized sheet for this thing? Um, so the answer to that is, from an endpoint insight standpoint, no. There is no style sheet for them um, at this time. Uh, I say it that way only because I have ideas on how to do it. Uh, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> so um, what we what I generally tell people to do is to take the endpoint insights uh, reports, clone them, and then stylize them that way. And then you can set up your subscription uh, your own um, way on that. Cool. Oh, apparently we had three questions asked. Uh, okay. Nope, Very yeah, good. Uh, all right. So those uh, are our dashboard emails. So those are the dashboard. They could be lists. They could be details. It, it, you know, you generally send out as a dashboard because you want to know a summary of uh, details uh, for things like that. So. Very good. So um, hidden prompts. So what's really been kind of interesting is listening to clients come to us and talk to us about um, some of their challenges is one of the lesser known um, report sets is about software update ages. So this is where Marty's going to uh, go off and bring up that report, which is under uh, security, under software updates, and then last, there it is. You got it. All right, so 
uh, we were supposed to do this from a different server, but that's okay. We can do it on this one. So what this report is going to show you is the breakdown of software updates on uh, zero to 30 days, 31 to 60, 60 days, 61 to 90 days, et cetera. You can see it all on the screen there. Apparently we did it on the right server. My apologies, Marty. I thought we were did it on, on the other server, but there you go. So you can see that that uh, uh, it's actually zero to 10 days, 11 to 60 days and all the rest of that. And I know Marty's uh, boss there and he's going to go, 10 days is, is too short of a time frame. We need to make that uh, 30 days throughout this whole thing. So here's the trick. Marty goes off to the report, clicks the three little buttons to go to manage. And then he goes to the parameters. And you'll notice that there's all these hidden parameters that, that are there. Uh, so you get to do your, your own ranges. So he can make that 30 days. And then he can go apply. Can I change this collection as well? You can. You can uncheck the uh, default, but you can set it to whatever you like. Cool. And then he can go and run this exact report again. And if you notice already, it's doing it on the collection that I picked. The one that you set is the default on. Yep. Yep. And then. <laughs> the joys of live demos. There you go. So. Uh, you can now see that the ranges have automatically changed on this thing. So there's little things like this that we've embedded in a number of the reports um, based on your feedback. Um, I'm not going to say they all have them, but I'm going to say that if there are things, little things like that, that will make your life really easy. One of our later tips will uh, um, help you on that. So this is one of the things that... Um, that's there. Now, one of the other things that on hidden prompts that's kind of interesting is if Marty goes up to the Endpoint Insights uh, directory and goes to Device Warranty and picks the uh, Computer Replacement, and we're going to go to Manage and prop, uh, Parameters on here. You'll notice that there's a number of parameters in here. And if you've ever watched us do this one, you'll notice that the first couple are all about the uh, replacement costs. And the next ones are all about the number of days. You know, that can be overwhelming to uh, managers throughout this whole thing. So what you can do is two things. First off is you can change it from visible to hidden so that they no longer see those uh, reports, but they're still there and you can edit them as you see fit. The second one is uh, you can actually change the values. So from the default on a desktop from being 500 bucks, uh, Marty and I will have this debate on whether you can get a desktop for 500 bucks anymore or not, but you can make it a thousand dollars. You can make it whatever. And yeah, you can put it to $10,000 if you're so inclined. <laughs> I want one of those workstations. Let's just put it that way. Absolutely. So the ability that, that, a lot of the, the parameters there, uh, you can hide them and just make it less um, overwhelming to your, your team is ideal from that scenario. Um, it gives you more control. Yeah, and remember here, I mean, you, you may or may not have seen this before, but here's what it looks like with all of these things available. So if you made these hidden, the number would still exist. <clears throat> it just wouldn't show necessarily these these parameters, uh, whichever one you've selected is hidden. Um, so you could still run the report, but it would use whatever number is set as default uh, Correct. in there as well. Yeah, great. So um, if you go look at the uh, PowerPoint, you'll notice that I put in a link into how to set up, go off and do that. It's just one of the blogs that, um, 
we show how you can do this thing. It's a great little trick if you don't want people to remember what they're supposed to have uh, access to or what they're supposed to select for all these things. So, and we'll include all these links in the follow-up email as well. So we're going to turn it into a PDF and send it off to them? Something of that sort, yeah. Fair enough. Great. <laughs> it's a great way for, for people to see what's there. Excellent. Our next step, talking about role-based administration and endpoint insights. I right. know we've had some questions on these um, on, um, on calls that I've been on, so this will actually be very, very good to look through. So I want to quickly remind people that um, uh, the Q&A is easier to, to follow for questions than the chat is. I believe there was one in there. Okay, uh, I caught it and we'll talk with uh, about Jeffrey's question in a minute. So, so role-based administration, uh, particularly in a larger environment, what you'll end up having is uh, staff or teams who are responsible for a group of computers that are within their environment. And within Configuration Manager, what you'll end up doing is you'll create a security role, you'll grant them that security role, you'll uh, administration. And so for an example, on the administrative users, you'll notice that there's an account called a GLO. So that is my non-admin account in the demo environment. Um, I've specifically given it access to uh, the report readers uh, security group, uh, security role. And then I granted it to one collection only. So on here, you'll notice that it's only got the sales office on here. Fair enough. Fair enough. So uh, what I want to do is if you log on, you're logged on, okay? I, yep. uh, I want to show you both with and without our back installed. So if you go to the uh, configuration manager report folder and under EI, uh, and I think you have to do this on the Power BI server, um, and let's do the device warranty one just for the sake of doing that one. And then computer replacement. So what I wanna show is without our back uh, installed on the report. And you'll notice when he clicks the collection on here, you can see every collection that exists within all the device collections that you can see within um, uh, configuration there. And that's both useful and not useful um, on the, the, the scenario. It means that they can see stuff that they shouldn't, might not necessarily uh, should see. So within Point Insights, you have the option of installing both the non RBAC, which I'm showing you here right now, or with the RBAC. So we set up one of the uh, reports uh, as non RBAC, sorry, as RBAC. So go to Endpoint Insights and then Endpoint, and then, uh, what was it? Oh, it was Endpoint Type. <laughs> and then Computer Endpoint, the account, sorry, the account, sorry. My apologies, it was the account. And then when he clicks the menu, you'll notice that there's only one collection. So this is, as part of the setup, you can collect uh, a checkbox and it will do the RBAC and follow the config man RBAC rules. And it will also, um, or you can install the non um, RBAC one as well. Very good. Would there be any reason why someone would even, I mean, why choose one or the other? If I, if I guess if I don't need our back, I'm not going to worry about it. Is there any, is there any other consideration for that, or is it? 
So based on popular feedback, uh, what we ended up doing is making the non-RBAC reports the default. Um, there were two reasons for this. Most organizations didn't seem to care if um, RBAC was uh, enabled or not um, for reporting, meaning they didn't care if the, the everybody could see everything. They, they just didn't care about that. Um, the second reason for that was there is a performance hit for it. Now, for most organizations, we'll never notice. And for most reports, you'll never notice. It. But anything dealing with um, software inventory can really get hit. Software updates can be hit. And of course, those are the two popular sets throughout the whole thing. So what we ended up doing is part of the setup, um, it, we made it an option. So for this demo here, we manually put up one report just to show how this uh, works on it. And I mean, if Marty clicks the uh, uh, Ottawa sales office and runs this report, he'll see the results for that singular collection. And you notice that when we created up this demo, we only put a few computers <laughs> into that collection, just to, to clearly demonstrate that this user is restricted to that. So you'll find that all the endpoint insights, SSRS reports are, are back compliant, and, uh, but it is a setup checkbox. Um, if you want to switch from RBAC to non-RBAC, it is a reinstall, but that reinstall process is a few minutes. Not, it's not arduous by any stretch of the imagination. So. Very good. All right, I'm going to go through the chat really quickly here. Yep. Uh, 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 there seems to be some screen sharing issues, but everybody else, it's a quiet group again this time, you know, <laughs> here we That's go. That's okay. This might get them talking. Power BI. So Jeffrey had a question about Power BI. Um, so what we're going to show here today is uh, Power BI desktop. You'll notice that if you pay a particular attention, we might be doing some demos on Power BI report server, but I may not be showing too much there today. So, um, so Power BI desktop, um, one of the things is that um, with Endpoint Insights, although I do have to do a star next to this thing, um, when you do the install of Endpoint Insights, you're not going to get the Power BI reports by default. If you talk to the support team, they are available, uh, just the PBIT files only at this exact uh, moment in time. But if you are wait a little longer, they will be included in the setup and uh, they'll be available on your site server uh, and you'll be able to have them all there. So. Basically, every category that we have, there is an equivalent Power BI report set for, and you can see it. So for our demonstration purposes only, we did do the endpoint type, and you can see that Marty has showing all of our uh, computers within our environment, all 2010, it looks like, of them. And if he clicks on any of the pie wedges, you'll see that it automatically filters based on the Power BI uh, options on here. And if he unselects that Power BI wedge and he selects on, uh, how about laptops? Up uh, here, do you want down there? Yeah, right, yeah, where you are now. And then he right, I think it's a right click. I always forget if it's a right click or a left click. He can then do the drill through. And you'll notice that you can drill through to the next report and we'll show what makes up those uh, um, uh, endpoints. So you can see all the computers, whether they're laptops, portable notebooks, et cetera. And if you, again, right clicks, or is it left click? I always forget. It's a right click, actually. Is it a right click? Oh, even better. 
and then yep. you can <laughs> and point and you can see more details about all this stuff. So all of this again is reading directly from the configuration manager uh, database and. Uh, you can also see the refresh time because in the bottom of uh, bottom right of the page, you can see the time that the, the data was uh, collected through this whole thing. So, um, so there's a large number of uh, Power BI report sets uh, there. Oh, sorry, I was just looking at. Uh, a question that came in on the whole thing. So um, Power BI, there's a lot to come with Power BI. Um, you'll notice that we are doing, uh, 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 using Power BI report server for a lot of our demos in here. Uh, you'll notice um, if you happen to be at Workplace Ninja last week, two weeks ago, I was demonstrating um, Power BI um, drilling down to SSRS. I was showing you how to do that with um, Power BI report server. And then I was doing that in our other our dev lab. And I, um, we're not going to show that today, but there's a lot more to come out there for that. We'd love to hear what you guys want to see about Power BI, uh, which actually leads us directly into our next thing, next item. Oh, yes, absolutely. So the ideas portal page. So if you go off to our ideas portal page, you'll notice that this is where we get a lot of our ideas from, from guys like you. Um, everything from, you know, we'd really like to see X and uh, a number of us go through those lists and look to see what, um, what are already exist or what can we do or, uh, whatever on it. Um, so for an example, on the screenshot, Murray's showing that uh, the second one down says reports to show all the local administrators. That already exists. And this one came up at one of our um, previous webinars that people wanted to ask for this uh, question. And, you know, we went in and found out that already exists within Endpoint Insights. We pointed them to where it was throughout this whole thing. Um, so it's a great way for you to um, give us ideas on what you want to see and what more you want to see. Um, and I never guarantee that we'll do it, but I guarantee you we'll listen. So yep, we will definitely take a look at it for sure. Yeah. All right, so we have two questions. Oh, go and ahead. I think what we're talking about right now goes to our first question there. It says, are recasts going to integrate with uh, MEM in the future? Um, and as you notice, there uh, may or may not be some Intune Azure AD online type things here in our ideas portal. And um, clearly, as things move more and more toward um, online solutions and, and things like that, we are uh, obviously taking the pulse of what, uh, what the community wants to see. Um, so if you have things, if you want us, the, that you want us to do, like this is pretty specific, Azure AD Laps or, you know, uh, Defender Intune Online, um, Ideas is another great place to put those things. And as they get more and more popular, obviously then, um, we're gonna take a look at them more quickly, if that makes sense. My, my follow-up on that uh, one about mm -hmm. the M is, are they talking about the um, portal page or is there something, because MEM's the product. So are, is it specifically about Intune or is it specifically about the portal? <clears throat> You know, so this is one of the things that where you put these things into the ideas portal, what you'll find is, uh, a couple of them, one of them being me, will ask questions. And the questions are to, to try to understand a little bit more 
about what your your use case is and try to flush it out a little bit more for um for us on that so that we can help with that uh sort of great so uh we have a second question in here um Uh, are you writing Power BI reports or are you pulling the default SSRS reports within uh, CM? <clears throat> so all of the Power BI reports that we, that, that Recast creates, we're, we're creating all of those reports uh, as PBIT files. Uh, and we're, we're, they're, they're available to be used with Power BI uh, desktop. In theory, they can be used with Power BI online if you set up the, 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 the VPN connection or the, the, the portal connection on that. Um, I, what I would say, Jeffrey, is um, if you want to touch base with me afterwards, uh, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your, your scenario because I'm still trying to wrap my mind about what do you mean by uh default ssrs reports in this context so um feel free to touch base with me after the fact if you particularly if you're a recast client you know uh talk to your your what do they call it customer engineers no uh <laughs> customers uh success manager csm yeah get in contact with them for sure they'll talk to me we'll all get into a call or whatever and or email chain and um uh you know i would love to learn more about what you uh uh are looking for or what more can we do to help um if you don't have a client um you know get a hold of the support or through the discourse uh channel that we have and uh because I do pay attention to the discourse channel as well that we have. So uh, there you go. I'm not always quick, particularly not this week. <clears throat> For those of you who ha haven't picked up on it, I got a bit of a cold or something. So uh, I'm uh, fighting through it today. So perfect. All right. I think we are to our bonus the bonus gem so the bonus gem on this um this is something i've been working on for a long time um what it is is a i've always people ask me about stats and they want to know how you're running your um your environment and what i ended up doing was creating a um report because this is our live demo environment, we literally have uh, people um, using this live. What we ended up doing is installing it, and you'll notice that it's hidden on here. So we've just hidden it on, the, on it within our demo environment. And I wanted to do it that way because they've got the best data on the, uh, the environment. So Marty's gonna run this, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna show you the number of executions for each of the reports that we've had I believe this is over the last 30 days. It will show you the total number of time it takes to run these things, how much data you're getting throughout this whole thing, the whole nine yards. It's a great way to understand your environment um, to see, you know, what's who's running what off of your um, environment. When we ran this uh, on the Power BI reports or which really there's only three of us uh, in the demo environment using, the results didn't look very nice. So we, we this is why we picked the, the live one on the wall to do this one. But yeah, and we were looking earlier too, if you click uh, down on the little uh, plus button here, and of course I did it twice because I'm impatient, uh, it'll actually also show you uh, exactly where that report is located. So if you're like, man, I didn't even realize, you know, that report was that popular. How do I find it? Uh, you can actually see where it's located. Um, and if I click on this, Garth, is it going to take me to that report? It will take you to that report. Right on. 
Yep. So and then in there, you can, can select a collection such as the, uh, what is it, virtual machines? Yep. Virtual devices. And you can run it. So you... So one of the things was, um, particularly, it was one of the things that I designed this thing for is to help you, um, who's running what? And then what is it? Because sometimes you go, I have no idea what what this report is. Um, but it seems very popular. <laughs> it seems very popular. So why are they running? Like, what are they seeing um, on it? It also is useful because um, if you get a report, and nobody's run it for the last 30 days, you can go, well, maybe I need to clean up. So, uh, because one of the things that I found, particularly as the old myself, when I used to work for uh, the Canadian government, um, we'd create reports for a project manager for whatever. And he would go, is this report being used? And you would have no way of knowing, is it being used or not? Um, and with something like this, you would be able to see, yes, it's being run. How is it being run? You know, how much data is it taking? It's also a great troubleshooting tip. So uh, uh, one of the things that I was also using this for was how long does it take for this thing to uh, uh, take? So right now we're seeing, uh, I believe that's the total. Now, if Marty goes to the far left, there's a small little plus button that's not very obvious. And if he clicks on that, it now changes everything to averages on the whole thing. So you now can see how the average time it takes to run each of the reports on all this uh, scenario. And this is, again, gives you an idea of, you know, is, um, well, let's pick, uh, let's pick the second row just because. Uh, so the all computer view, all in one computer view, second row, you know, is 196 milliseconds a lot of time. I'd say probably not. And is the whole rendering uh, average uh, about, uh, what is that, 4,000, 4, which I think is four seconds? That's not that bad. Um, for the whole thing. So each of these takes uh, tells you a little bit. The first column is telling you how long is it taking to pull that data from SQL itself. The second one is telling you how long does uh, SSRS or, or Power BI take to uh, process it. And then the last column is telling you how long does it take to actually display the data, obviously. The one advantage about this report as well is if you have Power BI reports in here, it will show you some information, more importantly, how often it counts, but it will not give you uh, the details of how many bytes and rows. And that is a limitation on um, Power BI report server itself, not capturing that data, which is unfortunate because one of my love-hate uh, uh, things with Power BI is in order to make it completely useful, you need to capture tons of data, but because you're capturing tons of data, it means that it's a lot slower. So this is where um, if you were in at Workplace Ninja two weeks ago, you would have seen how I showed, you can use Power BI as your dashboard and then drill down to um, SSRS for the details. And therefore you get the best of both worlds on that. Cool. Not promising that's coming at all <laughs> but if you were there it was a good time um, it, was, uh, it was a nice trick that was for sure it's yeah, a great trick all right we've got one more poll uh to come up an additional poll about this one would you like to actually see this released into the world uh, so that it could be used in your environment. Um, it's kind of the thing. If there's no interest in it, then then Garth made a nice troubleshooting tool for us, and and that's great. Um, but if you think it would be useful outside in the real world, uh, let us know. So right now it looks like um, two people accidentally hit no, but everybody else is very interested in this. <laughs> That'll happen. Oh. The, the one problem that I have to, to deal with is I have to figure out if I can release this under the recast banner, aka uh, 
uh, recast will support it, or if I have to release this under the ask uh, Garth banner and recast will wash their hands. <laughs> so we'll talk to legal and find out. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk to legal and find out. But uh, it's something I think that you guys will, it, it's helpful for you guys uh, just to see your environment. The one thing I will tell you about, and maybe Marty can quickly show this, is if you go to the Power BI report, so we, we, we set this up on the Power BI report server too, didn't we? Um, no, no, not um, go to the browser. You yeah, you want it from here. Yeah, I want it um, from here. HTTP, and then we want Power right. BI reports. And they think we put it in the same place. We'll find out. Hey, there, there is a metrics dashboard. So you notice the results weren't nearly as exciting as uh, uh, the main environment, but you do need to set it up in a, uh, for each report server. There is a little bit of uh, uh, work. I mean, Marty and I literally set this thing up in what two minutes, three minutes. Yeah, it didn't take very long at all. Yeah, it was it was pretty quick. Um, and based on the security does require you, the way it's set up right now, it does require that you to be a uh, an administrator on that SSRS or Power BI report server. Otherwise, you'll get an access denied type message. So, but that was by design on this, uh, at least at this time. So. All right. So we that got was our added bonus. Here. We've got a quiet group here. Was there any questions that we missed? Uh, does anybody have any questions about endpoint insights they'd like to see? Because there's lots of little hidden things that are in. Um, how about would anybody like pricing at endpoint insights? How about pricing? Would anybody like to learn more about the pricing about endpoint insights? You know, I or if you have any other questions about endpoint insights, feel free to add them to the Q&A section. It's all free, yeah. Um, there are other hidden things that we chose not to talk about. There are th some troubleshooting tools that within uh, Endpoint Insights that are there. There are things about, we extend the inventory of Endpoint Insights and uh, of Configuration Manager. And there's certain things that, um, we've created, but we haven't exposed. Uh, example of that is docking stations. If you have Endpoint Insights, go look at the actual WMI class for docking stations, and you'll see there's a lot more there than what we expose at this time. Um, and there's reasons for that. And uh, you know, we'll happily talk to you about those uh, uh, at some point in time. Um, one of my team, members uh, is supposed to send out a, a survey to the Endpoint Insight clients and um, we'll be doing some uh, interactions with you soon. Um, I'm just back in the office so I don't know if those actually have already gone out or not but they may have um, and we we'd love to hear from you guys. Tell us what you want, what you need, what would make your life easier. Uh, that's what we'll do. Oh, yes, Daniel. I hope to see you in uh, MMS there too, there, Daniel. Uh, there's a question about integrating. Uh, integration is by console. Um, when you say integration by console, one of the things that you'll notice is if Marty goes to, first off, I'll ask Jeff to close the poll because I think everybody's going to vote. If you go to uh, devices and uh, resource manager or resource explorer for a device, when it, Endpoint Insights installs on a device, it extends the inventory and Marty goes to resource explorer and expands off hardware, you'll see there's a number of classes that, uh, that are there. So each of that is the extra inventory that we've picked up 
from everything from docking stations, databases, you know, what applications CM itself has actually installed, whether it's applications or pack, uh, packages. Um, and because it's all in uh, the configuration manager database, it means that, God forbid, if you don't like our, our uh, reports, whether they're Power BI or SSRS, you can create your own. I always strongly encourage you to talk to us and you never know, we may uh, uh, do it for you. Um, but it's all there. And it also means that you can pull it out to uh, ServiceNow or Remedy or pick whatever thing you have. So there's a comment in the q and it says better log support. Well, I can tell you with the endpoint insights, the logging is really good. Um, uh, I can really tell you with the endpoint insights, the logging is really good. You can, I, I can assure you that you can see what's going on on there. For some of the recast, um, like right click tools, yes, I agree that some of the logging needs to be better. And trust me when I say I am advocating on your behalf for this thing but i encourage you strongly to <clears throat> talk to your support guys put it in the ideas portal give me all the ammunition i can to uh help you with that so sorry i'm gonna get off my soapbox on logging you know so Garth's favorite thing if ever uh, anything is happening in the environment he'll he'll immediately say what uh, what do the logs say so uh, <laughs> Garth loves logs and uh, nobody can take that away from him for sure no I love my CM trace man CM yep. trace and logs That's where it's at Famous. so uh, I'm sorry what was the other uh, did I miss anything no uh <laughs> Amazing profiles. Oh, great, Nick. So, um, uh, if there's any other, are there any other questions? Nope. I hope to see a lot of you guys at uh, uh, MMS uh, MOA in May. It's so far I just I just had a great time at uh, Workplace Ninja. And I believe Jeff is going off to application world or whatever in the Nordic countries next week. Is I will cool? not be there, but Recast will be presenting. So don't worry, it'll be a good Recast presentation there. And when is that again? Uh, yeah, I believe it's next week, actually. Oh, well, there you go. Just so, around the corner. I so will... now... Go ahead, Gar. I could say I'm not going to be there, unfortunately, yeah. but there you go. So, Yep, it's September 7th, actually. Um, but if we don't have any more questions, I think there's uh, this would be a good time to announce the four recast swag store winners. That would be Jonathan, Michael, Carol, and Elizabeth. Congratulations. You'll get an email from us later today or tomorrow with the, the link in there. Um, and I'm speaking for myself and probably the rest of everyone on the call, like the recast swag store is pretty exciting, especially as we move into the fall, cooler months. There's some pretty um oh. I don't want to say cozy items, but Garth is repping one right there as well. It's got you know sleeves on it. Hey, it's a nice little uh white fall jacket. So and I'm gonna and, steal the screen share here. Let's do da, 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 da. um come back. Let's do screen one. Get myself out of the way so we're not looking at each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, hopefully this webinar was uh, very informative for you. Um, just like the past webinars, we'll send a follow-up email out that'll have the, the link to this recording. We'll also have the links to um, the documentation that Marty and Garth referenced earlier in the presentation as well. Um, if you want more information, always feel free to reach out to us, um, recastsoftware.com. You can find the rest of our products on there. You can dive into more of Endpoint Insights information as well. Um, and yeah, we'll see what 2023 has in store for uh, Recast, Right Click Tools, Endpoint Insights, Shift Left, Privilege Manager, um, you name it, we'll see where it's going. So uh, Garth, Marty, any final words? Thanks, everyone. Party on. <laughs> Party on, Garth. Cool. Thanks, everyone.